claimed you were kicked out of UFC because you threatened to oh. kill his wife. Oh, 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 I'm glad you brought that up. That almost slid under the radar. Being kicked out of the show. So I incorrectly uh, uh, remembered Puerto Rico wrongly as nothing to do with affecting the story at all or his oddball goofy ass behavior and lies that he's spewing now um he uh the fight was going on and and i thought for some reason i was in paul's corner that time that's how long ago it was but I was sitting in the audience with with my then girlfriend, if I dare to call her that. Anyways, um, so Alan goes comes up to me in the audience and starts flapping nonsense and his goofy ass. Duh, duh, duh. I'm like, is this guy like retarded or something? And he's doing it right in front of of my my companion, lady companion there. And um, I'm like, no, 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 you don't talk to me like that, especially in front of my my woman there. And so I go, I'm going to uh, take care of business here. And Eddie, who's also fought in the UFC, I got him a fight in there. I got all my friends fights in the UFC. And um, Eddie was there. And um, I go, fuck that. No one talks to me like that. I don't care who you are. So I go, I'm going to get him. And so I go walking my way to go get him. And Eddie's probably five yards behind me in this arena. And um, so she starts yelling to Eddie to stop me. Get him, get him, get him. Don't let him, you know, don't let him go over there and do that. Cause they were on the other side of the octagon. Well, I hear no sense at that time. So I'm walking and Eddie's running after me like, Dave, Dave, Dave. So I walked up to them. And of course, they all are stone faced like, whoa, we didn't say anything. And yeah. And then he, he started to pop off. I went to slap him across his face. Like I said, I don't sucker punch people. And um, that turned into like a shoving, pushing match. And Elaine used to do all the clerical work and all that kind of stuff for the show. And so she ran up to her and said, oh, I heard you yelling, get him, get him. And she's like, what the hell are you talking about? And um, once again, she was the, my girlfriend was there, and they started getting it into each other. And I went to split them apart, like get get the hell out of here, Elaine. And and she is a Karen from the get go. She thinks she wears the pants, and she can boss you around. She's from the, the very first time I talked to her, I was like, oh my God, uh, she must be having a bad day. But um, that got separated. And then she, of course, wants to elevate it into a big scene. And I go, get the fuck out of here before I kill you. It was like hyperbole. It was not like, and it's like a narcissistic thing to do, like turn a statement like that into a big deal about yourself. And, and so that's what she clung on to. Like, oh, he said he was going to kill me. Oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. It was nonsense. And so they try to make a big deal out of it. And so I go home. We all fly home. I get a phone call. And it's like the show. And I was under contract with these people. And um, they're like, we got problems. And I'm like, oh, what's your problem? 
And I go, well, Big John and Elaine and this Dr. Ron Istergro are all going to quit because of you. And I'm like, good, who the hell are they? He's a referee. He's like Ronnie the ring builder on the side of the fucking thing. Who cares? And and his wife, oh, she needs to go too. She's a bitch. And they're like, no, this is like serious. I got serious. Are you fucking kidding me? Really? Are they putting asses in the seats? No. Oh, I'm gonna go watch a fight because Big John McCarthy's the ref. <laughs> what? Where, where do you wake up thinking like that? Anyways, um, so time goes by, and I, I believe, I'm, I, this is years ago, I, that Randleman was fighting. I, he might not have been against that Boss Rutten guy. And uh, they were fighting. That's probably the only reason why I would be home watching that is because of that's what the fight was. And um, so we watched the fight. And then after that show, I think it was in Detroit or something like this. I'm not a UFC historian. I give it very much thought, really. And so um, the phone rings after the show. And it was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, what do you mean? What, what am I doing? I guess they realized that I was the personality of the show. And that um, back in those days, I was, it was crazy, man. I couldn't walk anywhere. I was getting mobbed everywhere I went. And because people finally saw what real fighting was and not this mixed martial arts thing and the whole nine yards, they, they saw real fighting with heart and fighters fortitude and not a skill and so they realized hmm everybody wanted to see tank and they better figure out uh how to get him back and so bob like was saying you need to go get knee surgery go get knee surgery you're still on the payroll and um we'll figure out something out and they came up with this goofy ass letter of apology. And these guys, all the goons are going to form a pack, a bunch of high school geeks. And they're going to uh, form a pack and they're going to quit if the big bully gets to stay around. And I'm, I'm the big bully. I'm the coolest guy you'll ever meet if you're cool to me. And you get what you ask for. And so. Somehow this letter showed up and, and it found its way to um, the McCartneys and, uh, and Dr. Istergrow. And um, so everything, they, they had to realize that their um, leverage was really not leverage. And they agreed to, to stay on if if I come back and I came back and it seems like they still stayed on. Very funny, very funny story. Um, no one knows who wrote that letter. The rumor has it David Isaacs wrote the letter. He's a he's a Harvard attorney, so he'd probably have to dumb it way down. 